Hi traders, welcome to another webinar with me. Before we start, guys, just let me know that you can hear me and that you can see my screen. Okay, great. We have really a lot of people with us today. Let me see. We have over 700 members. This is really great, guys. For everyone that don't know me, my name is Nikola Delic and I'm trading for the last 10 years. I think that I spent most time of the 10 years working either in a hedge fund or a bank or running my own fund. I learned a lot on the road. Like I can't say it, it was 100% easy for me, especially since I started young, but overall, I become a successful trader. Now today, I want to tell you a three secrets that I learned that helped me to double my profit. Okay, guys, also keep in mind, if you have any question, you can always ask me. I'm not going to stop the webinar to answer every single question since we already got like 50 questions and I didn't even start, but we are going to let's say spend 10, 15, even more time at the end of the webinar where I'm going to go and try to answer as much question as I can. Okay, my goal of this training is going to be just to give you, first of all, the answer to common questions that come to my email every single day. Then I'm going to show you three simple yet highly profitable ways that you can focus in on to easily generate twice your regular profits. I'm also going to show you a special tool I use to analyze all of the above and a bit later I'll answer any questions you have. Okay guys, we can start. But before you start guys, I want you to put your phones into the flight mode. I know we are not in the planes and you can smoke, no worries about that, but I want your full attention since I know maybe some of this you already heard, but there will always be something that you are going to learn from me. Just turn off your phones. I'll also turn mine off. Give me a second, guys, since I know how much calls I get every single hour and I don't want that. So we can start, guys. Now, the question one is how many people are profitable trading Forex? This is one of the questions that I really get a lot because everyone type on the Google how much there is really a profitable traders in the world. And when you type that on the Google, you'll get something like a 5%. And I'm not going to say and lie to you that is some high number. But in my research, how many people really have a good system? Because most people that try to trade start always in the same way. They open a simple broker account just because someone advertised that you can become rich overnight. They start buying or selling because the news was good or news was bad or some indicator, let's say RSI is at 80. So I want to sell RSI is at 20. I want to buy and it never works. So they fail. Then they go to some forum, read a little bit about trading, get some poor system and try again. And of course they fail. So I'm not going to say that there is a lot of successful traders, but a lot of traders are successful. I personally know over a thousand traders that are making money. So it's not a small amount of like, I live right now in the small country and in this small country, I know like hundred profitable traders. So it's not that small amount of number. It's more or less people that are willing to spend the entire life, but take a little bit of their time to learn and get that system that's, that is proven, really have, really have the chance to make money. So that's my answer to this question. The next question that I usually get is how long can it take me to become profitable? 
it's really individual thing. It's separates for every single person. I seen people becoming profitable in a month time. Someone they someone need even a year. But in my view, if you have a good and quality system that's proven to work, the time that require you to become profitable is equal to the time that is really required to you to fully understand the system. Since technically speaking, even if you get the system, but you don't want to understand the rules of the system and you just want to press shiny button, it's never going to work. But if you get the system, you learn how the system works. So watch a few hours of videos, practice a little bit, it's going to work. I'm right now, like for the last two weeks, coaching 13 year old girl. So she only have 13 years and she's the daughter of my old boss from one hedge fund. And he told me, better to say, he bothered me like for six months for me to give that a try that he wanted for me to coach her. Now we are only working for a two weeks and she ended the last week with 15 trades and she got like 65% win rate. I'm not saying everyone will take like a week or so, like it's all how much time you are going to spend working on your success. It's that simple. There is no magic formula that I can say, guys, you'll need five days and you're going to be profitable. If you don't have that sometime, I don't say Forex is hard or trading any market is hard because in reality, it's not hard. But you need to understand the process. It's same in any job. You can't expect, let's say, most of you guys have a driving license, but it doesn't mean then you can go to a track and have the best lap ever right away just because you have a driving license. Someone need to show you when to corner, when to brake, when to accelerate. If you want to have a chance to at least get that average result. And if you need to get that best record time, you'll probably need a little bit of practice. So as soon as you learn where to brake and where to accelerate, you are going to have a great time on a track every single time. And this is the part with trading that a lot of people don't get is that usually every day for a Forex trader is same, because if you have a system, you're always going to follow exactly the same rules. And that part can get boring sometimes, but still, I don't worry about the boring part if that's paying me a monthly salary. Question three, how can I compete with the big banks? I also wanted to be the banks in their game. And that rule of trading that you want to buy low and sell high is usually never going to work. Because even if you have a large fund, like I have 50 million fund right now, but even with that size, I can't move the Forex market even for a one pip. So I know that <laughs> I can't change that part ever. And it's much better idea that you realize that it's better to follow what big banks are doing and do the same thing and ride with them, take some part of that action compared to the idea of trying to be them. You can't be them. It's better to earn 50 or 60% of something than 100% of nothing. So that's why you need to have a system that's proven. Just because if you use any system that you find online, that doesn't mean that that system have a good track record. Maybe, maybe it's looking like when I search for a systems online, just to see what the competition are doing, let's say like that, I see a lot of fancy charts, a lot of, a lot of charts that look like a Christmas tree. 
But overall, none of those systems have a good track record. They can maybe show you that they made money for a few days or even a month, but overall, I really don't think that's the key here. Just because if something worked for a five days, that doesn't mean that it's going to work for, for let's say, next six months. And if you want to beat the bank, you need to think and trade the same way they are trading. The next question is, which is the best time frame to use? We definitely have a lot of options there. Like you have from one minute all the way to one year, but definitely that depends from your broker. There is no a perfect time frame. It's again that subjective thing that is more related to you compared to others. Since if I look at my example, I started with the system that told me that I should trade only four hour charts. So for the first year of my trading career, I traded only on the four hour time frame. And it worked for me. But when I tried daily time frame, I wasn't that happy because the trades took too long to develop and I didn't, let's say, see myself waiting two, three months to get paid. So I dropped down to a smaller time from like a hour, one hour or 15 minutes. And I really have the best fun, fun around that area, 15 minutes to one hour. Just because I know it's more or less the day trading strategies that I'm looking for because I want that to trade few hours a day and then spend the rest of the days enjoying the life and not like wasting the time on being there all day long. But I want you to try at different time frames. Of course, if you have a system that tell you you shouldn't trade one minute chart, you should probably listen to that. But overall, you should try different time from C, what time frame is best for you. Since if you have a day job, you can still make money trading if you go with a higher time frame, just because it will give you that power to open the chart, set up your trades and go do whatever you want. So you don't need to watch every single move. You don't need to read every news headline and things like that. But still, I want you to try all of time frames. You will have fun on some of them. Some of them will be really boring or you really won't like the feeling how that look, because you are going to do the same thing on a daily basis. So try to find a time frame that suits that, that will make trading a happy feeling to you, not something that you won't like to do. Question five, can you trust expert advisors and technical indicators? This part is really tough for me because first of all, I was a developer before I started to trade. So I'm the person that really love to code and trust coding. But also I don't believe in 100% automated trading. To make it simple, if we use cars these days, like we have a Tesla that can't drive itself and you press a button and car is going to drive. When you first time that you drive in a Tesla and try that experience, you're shaking. You're shaking. Trust me, you are going to shake. You are never going to trust that car. I'm like, I driven that car a lot of times. And every time I need to turn that autopilot on, I'm afraid just because I don't trust them 100%. But also when you look at Tesla, for example, they are forcing you to have your hands on a steering wheel entire time. So they also know that we are not there yet. So 
I have that idea in trading. I like to use a lot of EAs. I personally have over 100 algos that I use in my trading, but I also want to have some some human intervention. Like I want to double check everything that that algo do. It's same for the technical indicators. Even if you have, even if you spend like two hours of building something, it's fine. But you want to double check that part. And if you do that kind of the situation, your results will improve a lot. Trust me, like I had one algo that was really successful to me. Like it was running only on the DAX for a two years and it really made me a lot of profit, but it wasn't com, it wasn't really meeting all the st- rules of the German stock exchange. So after two years of me and my brokers going, going here and there, they decided to ban my algo just because it didn't follow all the rules. Some small rules like you cannot, you cannot like uh, open and close the pending orders a lot of times during a day. So I decided, okay, let's make a new version of the same algo, but this time I will control the algo. So I will confirm if he should open a trade and it's working till today and no one complained and results are even better. Like we improved results by 15% just by me manually controlling the algo. So I won't say that you can trust algos 100%, but if you are in control of them, you have a good chance to enjoy that that ability, how to say this the best, to speed up the process of entering, exiting, and managing the trade, because that's what algos do. They help you to protect your account, and that's all. Next question is how many pips a day or a week are considered profitable? I definitely wouldn't consider anyone that tell me their results in pips as a profitable trader. I see this more great for a marketing purpose, and only that, since when you go to, let's say, these days, Facebook, Twitter, all you're going to hear is that someone made 1,000 pips or 10,000 pips, but no one tell you how much money actually they made from that, since if we have simple idea that a 100 pip move can be a $10 or maybe $10,000, definitely, I don't see a reason why we would anyone consider pips as a profitability factor. Also, keep in mind that most people that claim that they make a a lot of pips usually get those pips in a fake way, in a fake way like trading stocks or gold. And on the platforms like, for example, MetaTrader 4, you are going to have that bug that Instead of saying gold move for a two dollars, they will say gold move two hundred or two thousand dollars, depend on the decimal. So that's why I really don't want you to think about pips. All you should care about profitability, and when can you consider yourself a profitable trader? Would be when you make consistent returns month after month. I don't need you to make a lot of a lot of money. Like I want you to make a lot of money, but I would be fine and I would say you are a profitable trader if you made 10% only for a three straight months. Just because 10% can s- seem low. But at the end, it doesn't mean that you're always going to trade a small account. So when you trade larger account, that 10% is really huge. So focus on the percentages that you make. Don't focus on pips, guys. 
question seven. How does Forex compare to other financial instruments? I traded every single asset class in the world. And in my view, every single asset is the same thing. If you hide the name of the asset that you are trading, you really don't need to care about what you actually trade. But the reason why I prefer Forex compared to other market is only the volatility and the volume that we have in that market. Like, if we use this as example, like we have this represented, let's say, a stock market. And this will be a small representation of Forex daily volume. So I really don't want to be there all day long trying to trade against, let's say, 100,000 traders for one car. Because we are all battling against each other trying to get our piece of action. So, of course, I'm going to focus more on the Forex because I know that turnover is much, much larger. So, I have a better chance to get my piece and grab the car for myself compared to other markets. I'm not going to say that trading stock is a bad thing since I'm also trading stocks and options, but overall, I prefer currency market just because the volume is really great and I never had any problem like finding something to trade compared to idea of if you just use the US stock market for example we have 20,000 stocks and when you start looking stock by stock you will spend like 10 days trying to figure out what to trade I don't like that also. It's the good part of the stock market. You have a little bit more things to trade. But overall, that's not always that useful. It's much better to have a limited amount of things that are there. And just because you know there is always a volume in the Forex market, you are sure that you can always find your piece of action. Next question. How much of a deposit should I start with? I really think that starting capital don't matter. But I got a tip about this when I started a Forex that really helped me to become a better trader. So I want you to use that same advice. And the advice was that you should start with a small account with $100, $200 only and see how you're going to end the first month. If you end the first month in a profit, you can add another zero. So from $100, bucks, you are going to move to $1,000 and try that for a three months. If that works for you, you can increase your account size. The idea and why, why this really works is simple. When you start trading, you're usually moving from a demo account where you trade the fake money. And I won't say the demo account is a bad thing, but you're not going to learn that important part of emotions and how emotions are going to affect your trading on a demo account. Since Everyone can be a profitable on a demo account. So it's easier to start with a small account. Work that feelings. And if you prove to yourself that you can trade a $100 account, you can increase that to 1000 and see how that is going to work for three months. If you make that 10% for three months, you can put how much you want. And also keep in mind, going with some strong increases, like from 100 to a 10,000 or 100K accounts, is really going to be hard again on your mind. That's why we want to slowly increase our amount. Don't think that 
even if you have the best system in the world, that you are going to make money right away. Like we said, you need a time to learn the rules. So start first month with a small account, see how that works, and move from that. Question R. Which are the best currency pairs to trade? There is no best currency, really. This is more, in my view, the question of where you live and what session you are going to trade. Because we know that Forex market is working, yes, 24-7. But you're not going to see 24-7 the same volatility in every single pair. For example, if you are trading US session, the most volatility will be around that US dollar. So all dollar pairs are going to move. If you trade in the Asian session, the most volatility you are going to see where you are going to see in the yen group and commodity currencies like Aussie dollar or Kiwi dollar. So it's much smarter to trade the pairs that are working and moving best when you trade compared to wasting your day trying to trade the wrong pair. Maybe only in the UK session, you don't need to worry about this since UK session is usually the best in terms of volatility. And most pairs usually show a decent move during the UK session. But overall, check that part. It's simple checking. Just check what market do for a few days. If you don't see any movements, you can skip the pair. And just go with a simple logic. See which countries are working when you trade. For example, if you are trading the Asian session, what's open? Australia is open. China is open. Then Japan is open. So trade it. These currencies don't try to trade like maybe Euro USD because neither the Europe or New York is going to be open in the Asian session. Question 10. What kind of Forex trading strategy should I use? I know everyone will expect for me to say use my system, but I will never say things like that. I don't really care about the system. I care if you find a system that suits you. First of all, we have the two kinds of the trading styles. We have technical and fundamental approach. In the technical part, we are just going to rely on the indicators and draw a few lines. While on the fundamental side, we are going to rely on the news. So a lot of reading. I personally am not a big fan of trying to read every single headline. So fundamental part is not really something I enjoy, but I'm more a technical trader. But so I think you should find something that have at least some proof. What I like to do, and at least when I'm designing my systems, I want to, for every system, to run a stupid algo that will take every single trade with the worst possible case. So. I will probably skip a few rules and I will open every single trade. So I won't filter it. And only if after a six month period, I see that my win rate is over 50%, I will be thinking about, okay, maybe this system can work. And I will start working further after I see a six month proof. So someone tell you that they don't have that they don't have anyone to tell you that this system is working, especially if they didn't teach that system to anyone, since I always try to have at least two beta groups where I can get a feedback like if this is working for the average trader or not. 
So if you can't get those kind of push, it's a really a waste of time, guys. But still, find something that you like. If you like a technical trading, find some really good trading system that, that is based on some quality technical study. And if you are really more a reading type of a guy and love to read 101,000 news every single day, definitely go with some fundamental strategy. Now, top three secrets to double your profit. What I learned over the years is that definitely I learned a lot of things, but what worked the best for me and the thing that I was, as I teach a long time ago, I think in the, I think I learned that while I was working in the Deutsche Bank, I can't tell 100% be sure since I worked for two banks at that time. I think it was the Deutsche that told me that idea. Like we all know that technically speaking, market is always going to move in some sort of a wave fashion. But there will always be the three things that are going to be constant. You're always going to have that beginning, middle part, and the ending part. I call that phases one, two, and three. And it doesn't matter if you are in the bullish move or a bearish move, you're always going to have that phase one, two, and three. Now, here is why this is really important. And don't worry, it's not really complicated thing. We want to be the market. Like we want to trade in a direction of a large bank. And what I was coached, it was to always try to trade during that phase two and the phase three. So trying to pick up my strategy around the phase two and try to trade during those phase three. So the only thing I need to do when I analyze any instrument would be to just look where are we in the market? Just because we want to, like we talked, we want to be on the same side as the bank. And we can't be on the same side as a bank if we don't know in what phase we are right now. And it's simple, like we have one, two, and three. So everyone can count from one to three. Now, if we go phase by phase, phase one follows a period of a decline or a rise in the market. That depends if you are seeing in the bullish or bearish market. It's simply a fight between supply and demand to take control of the new trend. We can't always get a clear structure at the beginning of a new trend. The previous trend still attracts a lot of new traders and the fundamental picture can favor the previous direction. Expect to see some choppy movements here. We are never going to force any trades during this stage. Our goal here is to identify an early trend change and prepare ourselves for the next two stages. Draw a simple horizontal line at the beginning of phase one and use it as a short-term invalidation. So don't freak out. It's not complicated. So first thing first, what we know is that, let's say, if here, in this case, the previous trend was bearish, the first initial move is going to be our phase one. So the first high will be our phase one. Now, since usually when trend end, everyone is trying to jump into that late train ride. And a lot of new traders, especially, are going to try to sell during the phase one. So we can see a little bit of choppy market movements. It's not always the true, but most times. So from this point of view, what we need to understand is that it's really going to be hard part to trade the phase one. But if we detect the phase one, it's going to be 
pretty, pretty easy to know. Okay, if we detect a phase one, okay, we have a clue. This is the banks that are trying to change the trend since other people can do that, like normal people can do that. So we have a phase two and phase three to prepare ourselves and to make a profit. Now, phase two. Phase two is a small recovery that forms after the fight between supply and demand stops. For an uptrend, the sign that the bulls have won would be represented with a series of higher highs and for bears with a series of lower lows. So what does it mean? What we want to see, to confirm that phase one would be to see more higher highs in this case and higher lows. But if you see something like, let's say this, it's not really the phase one. So you want to see that higher highs, higher lows, simple. From a trading perspective, this is a stage where we can see a lot of aggressive plays in both directions. Everyone wants to step into a new trend early and new traders are trying to fight for a final positions in a direction of an old trend. Like we said, if you're, a lot of people do this part, trust me a lot, even a professional traders try to do that stupid thing. They don't want to admit that they are wrong. So you sell here, fine, you sell here, you sell here, you sell here, and market start to make a pullback. And you are happy at this stage just because, okay, market is finally moving my direction. I want to kill the market now. I want to make that million dollar in one trade. So you continue to add and market will never work like that. Definitely, if you are a smart trader, you can take advantage of the phase two and even ride that part of that pullback. Just because you know there will be a pullback in that phase two, so you can take advantage of that and trying to make the money from that new traders. Trust me, a lot of banks use the algos to do that. Now, phase two doesn't have a clear timetable. So it can last for a few days to months or even years. To get a clue as to whether we are in phase two or not, we use Fibonacci levels of phase one. The pullback in phase two should be a minimum of 23.6% and not larger than 90%. It's simple part. I'll show you in the chart later on. And don't worry, it's not really anything complicated. Phase three usually starts when the big boys fully exhaust their positions in the previous trend and start cashing in on their trade. During this stage, we can determine an aggressive order size, which would turn the market around. You will usually see a stronger volume. I'm not going to talk about the volume, especially in the currency market, but you will see a lot of orders flowing in at the beginning of the phase three. During this stage, we can expect a stronger movement in the direction of a new trend, and that would be phase one direction. The fundamental picture will also start supporting a new direction. Trading phase three is the best stage for trading in direction of the trend. Day traders and swing traders enjoy riding what we call the money phase. The key to making a profit is to jump with the larger players in the early stages of the phase and not to wait for a strong break to occur to get into the action. So if we look at this part here, what I done more or less for the last not 10 years since I didn't learn anything about how market really worked for the first two. But let's say I want to be in a trade, ideally in this stage. Maybe even here I want to be looking to enter a trade, but I don't want to try to enter a trade here. 
because that's what I call that a bad money because usually late in a trend is not a winning trader. You want to be first, but if you know that simple idea that you have phase one, and when you identify the phase one early, you have the chance, you have a time, a, a plenty of time, trust me. Since this idea will work on any time frame. And you can always have enough time to find yourself, like even waiting one, two hours for the phase two to end, and then trying to force yourself to trade that smart money. During this stage, we can use a phase one as a potential measuring tool. We are going to compare the 100%, 127 to 1618 and 200% levels of phase one compared to phase three. If you are currently above the 200% mark, it's too late to get into any major trade. And from there, you can only chase a day trades, nothing more. Now, I know when you look at this part, it's really, really complicated. But first of all, I'm not always someone that like to spend days of trying to figure out this kind of thing. So we have the indicator for this part. So we have the, the tool that will analyze everything for you. But before we go and show you that part, I want to show you what you want to do. So first thing, first open any chart you want. Really it doesn't matter time frame or chart. And I want you to look at the current market price. Define the trend in this case would be simple. We are moving lower. So if we are moving lower, what we are going to try to identify is the highest point that we see here. So this will be our highest point. So we want to see what? One, two, three. Simple. So if we have one, two, and three, what we know for the phase two, so we draw a Fibonacci from start to end of the phase one, and if we want to see minimum 23.6% and 90%, I don't have it here, but you get the point. But we want to see minimum 23.6%. That's fine. And after that, we can compare, let me write it again. No worries. So Fibonacci expansion, just to compare the phase one and three. So if we are in the phase three, we are going to look for the, we are going to look for a hundred percent at three, then we can focus on 120, 36, 1618, 200, and that's all. Like if price is 200, you don't have a chance to enter a trade. Now, Here's why this information is useful. The reason why I love phases is because if I know where I am right now, I know what kind of the system is going to work the best for me at this moment. For example, we are in, let's say, I call this a middle stage, middle of the phase three, just because we are at the equal X can be over, but see, we already done it. And I would prefer to try to find the trades around this zone, to enter a trade at this zone. So I can either look for any pullback trades or use maybe any formation, use supply demand, support resistance, and see if that will work for me. Just because, just because I know there is a chance to see more room to the downside. Let's look here. What we have. What we have here, we can either start from here or here. If you say we are in the downtrend, we would start from here and you would get one, two, three. So that seems over. If you say we are in the uptrend, we are looking at the high and we start to get the first high, pullback to 
and then we are looking for this to be our tree. Now, the part that interests me here would be that feeble comparison between phase. Uh, let, me, let me add 200 real quickly. Okay, so this is our 200 level. And right away, I see I'm a late to this game. So I would rather focus on the next momentum and look at this as a one, two, three compared to the idea of trying to chase the upside right away. Just because according to my idea of what I was learned how to find the trades, this would be one, two, three. I know this sounds really complicated first, but let's see. We have the indicator that tell me this. Since first of all, what I found about phase is that they were great. But the part is that it took me a little bit of time to find them in a few seconds. Like even now, I, I will need a little bit of time to check everything. So we designed the indicator that tells me, let's see here, you can see it's a phase three. Or here you have the simple label that say phase three. So is the Euro USD on one week time frame? So the same thing. Like we said, we are starting from the high point or the low depend on the side. So we are at the 618. This is weekly time frame. So we work on every time frame. So if you move lower, the 100% would be the next level of the interest for us. And I know what kind of the systems I want to use. And I've been trading due to the downside for a while now, just because of this. Let's see here. Pound. Like, it's going to work. Exactly the same thing. You can even see the phase like here. So we have one, two, three. You see different colors. We have the phase one and the phase three showing in the same color since I don't like having too much colors on the chart. But overall, phase two is this a light part. So it's, we are in the bearish phase three. And I think just before, before I learned this, maybe not before, but after I learned this, I was speaking on a seminar in the UK. It was, I think, my first public speech as a trader. And it was a long time ago. I think 2013, yeah, 13 or 14. And I was telling people, I have somewhere I can show you guys on some other time that presentation. I was telling people, guys, we are in the phase two and I want to see a drop down in the pound. And everyone left at me, to be honest, just because I was the only bear. Okay, I come to other people's country and say their country will suck. And that value is going to drop really a lot. After, I think, year, really after just one year, of my speech, market started to reverse. And after, I think, like, since you know that I 2015 got the job, I was called by the guy that was organizing that seminar since he ran the private fund, some pension fund in the UK. He called me and he gave me a job in his fund just because of that simple thing. I learned really a lot of things in that fund, but everyone wanted the pound to move higher. And the only reason why I wanted the price to move lower was just because I knew how to say, okay, there is a chance that we are in the phase two. And keep in mind, I done that manual part back then, since I didn't have this indicator 10 years ago, not 10, but let's say a few years ago. 
And after that, I started to use this approach for every single trade I do. And my results really always, always really improve. Now, if I see a strong phase one, I can trade it fine. I don't want to trade the phase one, but I'll give it a try. Now, phase two, especially in this higher time frame, I'm really fine with trading. And I can buy and buy in this case, since it's the phase two. So I know there is a chance we are moving higher. But once we turn to phase three, I'm not going to buy. I'm going to focus only on the short trades. This is, I think, also the reason why I used phases before the Brexit. Since I traded the Brexit live. And we were in the phase three. There wasn't any chance of price moving higher. And if you know that kind of a thing, you're always going to have advantage over others since banks use the same thing and they are not going to go against their own system. So the reason I like using the phase is just because they can tell me, first of all, what kind of a system I want to try to trade. I know where can I expect to put my take profit for example, let's say we know that technically speaking, we know that phase two should be at least 23.6% and we can what, use the simple feeble levels to be our take profits. Also, we know where is going to be our stop. Usually I like to use the nearest, let's say, high or the low point, let's say if I want to sell, this would probably be my stop. But also, let's say you can use the faces to help you with that part. Like, we know that that phase two should hold the phase one star, so this can be your stop loss if we are trying to trade early. But once you have the phase three, you know that phase three won't do this. That phase three is just going to move down. So if you are doing the phase three, you can use the end of that phase two as your potential stop loss. That's why I really think this is going to be the key, guys. If we turn to the presentation, guys. You guys, let me know now. If you have any question, we have a lot of questions. We have the first question from Zach. I see you mentioned and are showing to us the ND10X you used. What exactly would I get with the ND10X system? Yeah, I'm, that chart was from the ND10X. Like we have it. Doesn't matter. Like we have a lot of things here a lot of things but technically speaking i can't take a share too much details yet about the nd 10x at least not for the next two days but i wanted to show you the chart and i think the indicator were great so you are going to get the instant access to the member series members area where you are going to get a full master class on how to use the nd 10x and what the we added there is a detailed training on what I really think every trader must know. I want to talk. It's not that everyone will make money, but I want to make sure that all my traders are in that 5%. So we have a really a detailed explanation on trading. You get to download all instructions and all custom built indicators. We will have a lot of live webinars. We are going to have that part of, we have that part of educational webinars and we are going to have a lot of live trading webinars where I want to go and trade with you guys live and a lot more, but I really can't talk 
about this yet since my partner will kill me. But I will definitely be there with you all the ways. So I'll tell you more about that part later. Let's see. Next question. Again, Jason, how does the Andy Tanak system work? Like I said, I can't share every single information right now, especially the NDTNX is something I want to share only with my members. But you can see on the chart, we have a lot of things going on. We done a, in a simple world, we build that part of automatically finding the faces and According to the best face, you are going to get displayed the best possible trades for the current scenario. So you're always going to know where the market will move and you're going to get best systems to use and alerts on those systems. And 99% is automated. Yeah. See, I'm pretty guys. Sorry for a little bit waiting, but we have a lot of questions. I need to scroll back to find the one. But see a lot of them about ND10X. You, you don't need to, like, this time you don't need to ask me just about ND10X, especially since I can't share a lot of details. Question from Derek. How long would it take to learn to trade with ND10X? Like we said, as long as it will take you to learn and you just need to watch, technically speaking, all the videos, give it a little bit of time. I done a test with the beta group. We done a two groups, one where four people were traded, but no one had a prior experience in trading. So we had a four people that never traded in life and we had a different result. Like uh, they are all profitable now, but the best one from that group was like, I think one month. And the worst was three and a half months. So, but they never traded before. And the second beta group, like, I think they picked it up pretty fast, like 15, 20 days only. No, but I think I already answered this. Mark, Mark asked us, is this working for other traders yet? Like I said, we done the beta group testing you'll get probably results from them on a Monday when we share when we share the ND 10x. So when we open it to public, so you'll see the results. But I can tell you that the we got one guy that really impressed me in the three months he made over a hundred percent when the with the ND 10x in the last three months. So yeah, we have it working for others. It's not something that it's going to work for me only. Now, you show a question from Emmanuel. you shown a monthly chart, but within the phase you shown, one could surely find many other phases, one to three on lower time frames. Yeah, that's why I like this approach. It doesn't mean that you need to stick with a one time frame. Phases will work and appear on any time frame and it's only what time frame you are going to trade you can just focus on that that phase count nothing more so it doesn't matter if it's weekly monthly five minutes chart let's see here let's see here this is five minutes of the us dollar index we have that face count. I hide the labels here since I don't need them. And you have something like this, like a potential signals. But I can't share much about that part right now. But it's going to work. The only part you need to understand about the face is that you should not go with the idea of if you try to, if you want to try to trade 15 minutes time frame. You don't want to go to the daily chart and try to find the face. You want to try to find the face on the same time frame or maybe one time frame higher the current face. 
also keep in mind that I had I have a lot of lot of let's say accounts that I'm managing and some of them their people force me to trade on the monthly time frame. So I need to know that part also. See so if we go here. If we detect, if we detect that phase one is over, what you want to do is try to find many system you want, like that's working for you. Definitely, it's not like. Uh, give me a second, guys. So first of all, let's cover this part, and that's how the best way to play that third phase. Like you have a time for the phase three to phase two, sorry, to develop. So we have enough time to find a system that can work. For some people, maybe a simple support resistance trading can work. Like if that's something you're good in, like this was a resistance, you sell here because this is the phase two, you know, phase three is going to move down. You have the stops here. Or if you are, let's say, let's say a formation trader, maybe you see this as a potential wedge formation and you sell at the breakout point. So it really doesn't matter. The only part you want to try to searching there would be a potential, uh, a potential system that will give you a short signal. Also, you can trade every single phase. Like the good part is that you we are trying to trade the phase two and three most part of the times since that's what banks are doing so that's what we want to do phase one can be traded if it's sharp and clean but most of the times they are going to be a little bit ugly i can have any good example here because markets was a little bit sharp lately um, okay, let's say it's not perfect. Okay, let's say we have a strong downtrend. We have a lot of overlapping movements. So this period, in my view, is not that great to trade. But after that pullback, and I can plan a trade. Now, question from Luke want to know about third phase when to know it starts the simple approach for to know how when the phase three starts you can do a few things i like to use personally a fibonacci retracement just using fibonacci retracement from start to end of the phase two and i'm waiting for a 38.2 percent to be broken you can use something like a trend line or a channel and use that but what i was learned to to do is to wait for 38.2 of the phase two to get reached and then i have initial confirmation when the phase three is ready to start we have a question from Des. Do the phase have consolidation and expansion in them? Yes, but I think if you start trying to go that deep into this, you are going to doing that manually is going to be hard and you can get confused. So I would just focus on like what we said, open the any time from you want define define that part of of a high and the low and start looking for the high and the low and do the simple thing once three phases are over look for the three phases on the opposite side so for example if you are here one two three one two three one two three so one two three or something like that so don't try to go try to count them like 
we must have this, we must have this. I don't want that. It's overcomplicating parts and it's there to give us a clue, give us a clue when we want to trade and give us that small piece of information. It's not something that will be there to tell you right away, you now need to enter. It's there to give you the clue what kind of the system you want to use. For example, maybe you are in the late phase three. So you know that you are, let's say we are 200% of the phase one. So you can think that it's too late for a potential trading in the direction of the trend. You want to start thinking about a system that will work for a reversal trade. So trying something, let's say, some sort of inverse formations like a head and shoulders, double bottom in this case, that's something that will work. That's why I want to use, that's why I want to use phases. I don't want to for them to tell me where, when to enter a trade. I have a lot of systems that can tell me, but I want to know what system have the best chance to work at the current moment in time. And that's all that's important to me. Nothing else. Question from Luke. Do you think high Kenashi candles are useful to visual the difference phase better? No. I they won't that won't work at all, to be honest. Just because I worked a lot with them in the past, but I never found them close that they will probably lie most of the times about the current phase. So I would really wouldn't do it. I prefer, to be honest, to use the candlestick chart for that. If you want, you can use... Where is... Sorry. Maybe even it's easier that you go with the line charts. Since you see the real high and the low in my view, so you can use the line charts maybe best for that. If you have the issue with the candlestick, but all other ch chart types really won't give you any more information. Since your idea is to find the high and the low and all other candlestick types but really don't give you any new information than a simple candlestick will give you. Question from Andre. So Nicola, can we rely on simply a one indicator to trade and probably another to indicate a path to go? It really depends what kind of the indicator you are relying on. I don't think that you can rely on just a one indicator. And there is no one single indicator that will tell you every single thing. But if you know, for example, if I know the phase, I know what other indicator, like what indicators can help me to enter a trade. That's the part that I would say, but I don't think that only one indicator can work. Like if you just use phase indicator, one yeah, but if you use a phase indicator with other indicators that were designed to tell you this, this, and this, that can work. Are spikes incorporated in phase analysis? It's fine, like you can you can add them, but overall, like it's price section, it's price section. That's why I probably prefer a line chart since you don't have a lot of, let's say, we go to candlestick, we have high here. If we go to the line, we have this being a real high. So I would probably use this as a real starting point, this a real ending point of the phase one. It's much better, at least in my view. But it's simple, like the key here, guys, is to try not to overcomplicate your trading, especially with this kind, 
of trading. Since banks and big boys are moving the market, they have a lot of tools, but you also have access to more or less all of those tools. You just need to be smart a little bit and don't try to overcomplicate your trading. It's not like they invented something crazy that no one can replicate. Since you need to realize that still in those large banks and institutions, it's only people that are working. So same. And you don't need to be smart to make money in Forex. Trust me. A lot of people ask me, especially since I worked in the banks and hedge funds, if I finished a, a college for a finance and I didn't, guys, I dropped my, I, I didn't even study the finance in school. I still worked for me. I was a developer, so I was on the IT class. So you don't need to have any prior background to economics to make money trading, but you need to know the basic things, but you don't need to go to school. Trust me about on that. Also, I am not smarter than any one of you for sure. I barely, I mean, I was good in some parts in school, like IT, math, I was good there, but technically speaking, I wasn't some like best person in my class for sure. So don't think about, let's say that if you, you need to be super smart to make money trading, I wasn't that smartest person in the room for sure. I like I like math, so maybe that's why I like trading. But when I learned to trade successfully, I learned that you need to know math, but it's not some crazy math that you need. It's probably first or second grade math that you really need to know. And that's all. Everything else is done for you by a lot of codes. Okay, guys. Okay, guys, I really want to thank everyone since we are still having 700 people here and I'm really amazed that you stay till the end, guys. I really want to thanks, thank you for watching and please keep a lookout for my next announcement in the next day or so. And, let, and to learn more about trading and collect some free trading systems, you can visit my site right now. Also, yeah. I got a good question. Like, I think I can answer this. And question is, are how much copies I'm going to have for the ND 10x? To be honest, guys, it's hard. You know that, of course, it's not my first system I released, but I wanted a slightly different approach this time. I really want a slightly different approach. I want to prove to everyone that I can have 100% success rate with my students. 100% in terms of, I want every single student to be profitable, but every single one of them. So I agreed with my partner that we only let 250 people in that will work with me and we won't stop until all 250 people are profitable traders. So keep that in mind, guys, that we are going to open the door to ND 10X on Monday. So keep keep a track on that, guys. And it's only 250 people. So I want them to make money. I'll personally be there, trade with them live. So I want to make sure that all 250 people make money and become a good trader. Okay, guys, since there are no more questions, we can close the session and I'll see you all really soon. Also, guys, keep in mind, go to the nd10x.com if you want to stay informed about more news. Cheers, guys.